could just pick that trailer up and spun it a couple of times in midair and slammed it down. And I thought the top was crushed in on us. I was on the icebox on my knees holding it up off my two boys. But by the time I, one of them was pinned and I lifted that floor off of him, I thought I lifted the top. When we got there, got it out, we found out it was the floor that was down on us. And it was still raining and hailing and everything. And I, I just really don't know how, it, ever, it was just a miracle that we ever got out. Unfortunately, I've never played it well. This has always been uh, a tournament that I just have never been able to get everything together. And uh, what the reason is, I don't know. Uh, but uh, I hope to find some little secret before I see you off tomorrow. I don't know what it's going to be, but I'm going to be out there looking for one today. If you had to point out a couple of holes that must be played well in order to win, which ones uh, would you consider? Well, let's see. I think uh, the first one I'd pick would be the fifth hole, I believe, as we play it. It's a real tough par four, and it's well bunkered, and the green slopes severely to the left, which rolls completely away from any shots you have to hit in there because you have to hook it to go into the green to start with. And, and that hole has always been a bad one for me to start with, and uh, I know that uh, it's a bad one for everybody. And uh, then there's, there's a couple more spots out there that you really have to be careful, but that's, that's my main hole right there. Texas citizens may be about to witness accomplishment of the impossible, that being passage of the largest tax bill in history before the end of the regular session of the legislature. The Senate today approved its version of the tax bill, which would raise about $660 million, relying heavily on increases in the sales and automobile tax, larger levies on cigarettes, gasoline, and beer, and a healthy increase in the corporation franchise tax. Lieutenant Governor Ben Barnes was finally able to gain a two-thirds vote on that tax bill, which means if it got a similar vote in the House, it could go into immediate effect rather than having to wait two months after the end of the legislative session. The next question, however, is can the House approve the bill without having to send it to a conference committee? And there are strong indications, although no one agrees to having formulated a plan between the two houses, that there is an effort to avoid a conference committee. That would avoid three more major fights in the legislature before final passage of the tax bill. House Speaker Gus Mutcher has indicated that he is happy with the Senate passage of the bill. To see the Senate pass the tax bill today gives me uh, great hope and great encouragement that our primary objective of trying to be able to complete the major problem of this session uh, during the regular session itself. Uh, as for the uh, contents of the bill, the, the concept, the uh, philosophy of it is uh, by and large uh, to a great extent in line with the uh, type of bill that the House sent the Senate some eight weeks ago. Uh, I still feel that the uh, balance was probably a little bit better in the House bill than we will see in the Senate bill. On several occasions in the last few months, inspection and investigation teams have been sent to Carlin to look into the alleged irregularities there. At least two of those investigations never took place. The most recent one was on the weekend of April 17th and 18th when the Inspector General here at Camp Mabry in Austin sent his investigating team to Garland. 
They refused to discuss with me what they found there, but of course they have reported to the Adjutant General of the State of Texas, Major General Ross Ayers. Well, Jerry, uh, uh, I sent a special investigative team to uh, Garland last week, and uh, this team completed uh, their preliminary report to me yesterday, at which time I notified General Rose, the Assistant Adjutant General Ayer, and General Stout, Chief Staff Ayer, that the three of us, one day early next week, will go to Garland and talk with the commander and all of the full-time personnel at Garland. And uh, we, I do not want to make uh, any uh, conclusions until I have done that. Well, are you, in effect, recovering the ground that your inspection team sent, or are you going to act on information which they gathered? I want uh, some information, uh, some of the information that the inspection team turned in was complete, and some of it I think needs some amplification, or at least clarification, because there were some facets uh, that were not covered uh, in the detail that uh, I desired. These charges have also been brought to the attention of the Senate Investigating Committee here in Austin. They've talked about it for the last month and a half, and there is no particular reason at this time to believe that they will investigate, at least not now. Jerry Taft, Channel 8 News on the Move, Austin. Well, from school, uh, 12 years, at least. I've been pro for seven, seven and a half years. What was your club, though, in England? Uh, from leaving school, uh, Everton for four years, and then Wrexham, Chester, and uh, ultimately your family. How did uh, Ron Newman find you? Well, uh, Ron and John Best were after me uh, about two seasons ago when I was at Wigan. I was at Wigan for a while, played for them, and Ron was spotting me playing and wanted me to come over, but the club wouldn't let me go. They had me under contract. So I couldn't get away. Now you are here in Texas, having arrived just uh, Monday, I believe. How do you like Monday it? Evening. I think it's great over here. It's a lot quicker my life, you know, but uh, I'm enjoying myself. How do you feel about your tornado uh, mates? Uh, you've had a few workouts with them, have you not? Well, I've been with the two practice sessions with them, and uh, quite enjoy being with them. Good bunch of lads. Have you heard much about uh, Atlanta? What do you plan to do to them Saturday well, night? I've been told that a strong team, a lot of physical contact, but I don't mind that. I'll just have a go against them, do my best. Five hundred books a year to the Underwood Law Library. They now have a new building that's big enough for them. They hope to be here for many years to come. Phil Reynolds, Channel 8 News on the Move in the Underwood Law Library at SMU. Every trial judge is the king of his own little kingdom with the right to sit when he wants to, not sit when he wishes, try what he wants to, and not try anything if he doesn't want to, uh, up to the point where he may finally be removed by the Judicial Qualifications Commission. But this is the opposite of the unified system. What do you think about it? Okay. Oh, I think the unified system, definitely. I think, I think every judge who is paid to be a judge ought to be spending his time judging. And uh, uh, I think somebody, if it's necessary for somebody to see that he does that, then someone could be in a position to see that he does rather unique. I think perhaps that, uh, that question ought to answer itself. Uh, uh, Any time I see any evidence, any evidence of any judge in the Supreme Court of Texas leaning uh, in a political direction of deciding a case, I know something's wrong with the system.
never start with a different method of selection than partisan election of judges, and I got there by partisan election. And I'm not going to run again, so I have no selfish interest. Well, at first I thought they were kidding, you know, because one of them threw his hands up and I thought, well, maybe they were friends. But then when they started shooting, well, I knew that it was must be some serious trouble. How long do you think the whole thing took? <laughs> it's hard to say. When you saw the policeman shot, what did you do? I ran outside to see if I could help him, but the, the suspects had already run away. They ran down that street. Were you able to help him? Well, I asked him if he needed help, and then I brought a towel to bandage his arm up a little bit, but he wasn't bleeding very badly.
The library is brand new. It's completed less than a year ago, and it's built for more than 450,000 volumes. Right now, there are only about 125,000 in it, and the main attraction is up on the fourth floor. The fourth floor contains a library in itself. Reference librarian Shirley Jesser took Channel 8 News through the library with a collection of sea law, possibly the only one in this area, and through the new collection of space law, which of course is an infant in legal practice. There's a complete library in the fourth floor also of foreign laws, some of them better libraries than you will find in their own countries. It's open to foreign legal students, and of course the entire law library here is open to any attorney who wants to come in here and use it. Attorneys have done so from as far away as Ennis, Terrell, and Fort Worth. Possibly the Underwood Library's proudest section is the rare book room, which contains such things as an original papal bull dated in 1174, original documents from the American Revolution, some of them signed by George Washington, and some accounts of witch trials in the United States that date back to the 1600s. Good shot, Sandra. Oh, thanks, Jerry. <laughs> How's your game holding up? Well, I hope uh, real well this week. A um, little rain in the sky today, and uh, you know, I wish I had put some money on us coming in this week to bring Texas some rain. It was mighty nice of you. Yeah, well, thanks. <laughs> how's your record been in the past tournaments leading up to this one? Well, I placed uh, second in the first tournament of the year at St. Lucie, and I tied 13th in Raleigh, and. Um, I didn't play quite as well as I'd like to have last week in, in Miami. It was a very good golf course, but high winds. We had 35 mile an hour winds, and that was just a little out of my class, I guess. It just doesn't happen very often that you get four ideal days of golf, does it? No, it doesn't, and especially here in Texas, you can always count on the wind blowing here. But fortunately, the course is not that demanding uh, where you have to, um, you know, you can hit your tee shots a little wild and uh, still get away with it here. Whose game is best suited uh, for Glen Lakes? Well, I think we have a lot of players that are that are playing well. Of course, Sandra Haney is just coming off of a win in Miami, and of course you always have Kathy Whitworth and Carol Mann, and you know usually the same ones all the time. <laughs> Not to mention Sandra Palmer. Well, I hope so, yes. It seems like I've always played fairly well here, and, uh, and uh, of course, I'd like to continue on that course. I asked uh, Sandra Haney about a couple of holes that would, be, would have to be played well in order to win, and she picked number five, I believe. Oh, definitely. Five is always a very demanding hole, and I think 11. Well, the United Nations has already decided to hold the first world conference ever held on the human environment. That will take place in Stockholm in June 1972. And it'll be just a two-week conference with an enormous agenda having to do with all kinds of pollution problems, problems of human settlement, problems of 
what kind of new institutions the world may need in order to cope uh, with the ecological difficulties that we're beginning to get into. And uh, Is there a more serious problem international than there is, say, in the United States? Not yet, no. I think that uh, the United States is unquestionably uh, not only the biggest industrial power of the world, but also the biggest polluter. I think the best evidence is generally not regarded to be too good is that there is such a uh, widespread uh, movement in this country, federal and state, uh, not limited to any particular state, for, for judicial reform. I think that's the best evidence that it's not too heavy. We have some programs of reform in Texas I would like to see uh, get a boost from this. Uh, we have pending in the legislature of the state of Texas a uh, constitutional amendment for adoption of a merit system of selecting appellate judges with the right in the legislature to uh, apply that same system to trial judges in the future. Uh, we also uh, have under study by a legislative committee a statewide unified judiciary. Uh, so there are a number of these things that we're interested in in Texas that are really in the, in the mill now.